You're listening to the Mind Your Own Business podcast, aimed at helping photographers learn how to make the leap from amateur to pro. Hello and welcome to the Mind Your Own Business podcast, a joint effort brought to you by PhotoFocus and Skip Cohen University. This is Shamira Young and I'm joined by my very special co-host, Skip Cohen. Very special. Yes. That's scary. In a good way. Every now and then she will look at me and like the church lady from Saturday Night Live will say, now, isn't that special? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. It, this is this is fun. This is a very strange podcast to do today. So mm. for everybody listening, um, we're going to we're going to kind of do a review of some of the highlights um, over the last few years, because after, I don't know, somewhere between eight and nine years uh, ago, this podcast got started. And I decided a few weeks ago that it's time to move on to something a little different. I don't know what, because like most of you out there, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up either. <laughs> uh, so we're going to kind of look back at, at some cool things that Shamir and I have learned today. But just to fill you in on how this got started, somewhere between eight and nine years ago, Rich Harrington um, had a great idea. And he said, you want to do a podcast um, and interview people from the industry. And at that time, we were doing it with video. And what I didn't like about it was it was just it was just talking heads and because I don't know what I'm doing with lighting. And yes, I admit that, um, rich was always well lit on his headshot. And I had a 75 watt bulb in one of those clip on lamps that every college kid has that sits on their headboard. If they have a headboard, um, on their bunk bed in in college. (laughs) So mine was always terribly lit and just horrible. And Rich was always looking good. And then it was just talking heads because this is a podcast and we weren't really, we weren't teaching anything directly. Like we weren't showing you the technique of how you should pose a bride, for example, or a headshot. Um, We were talking about business and marketing. So it just, like I saw, say it again, it just became talking heads. So we, we changed, uh, we were trying to come up with a name for it. Rich said, what should we call it? And I yelled to my wife, Sheila, what should we call it? She thought for a second and she said, why not mind your own business? So it was Rich's <laughs> idea. He and I did it together. Sheila named it and off we went. And after a couple years of podcasts, uh, Rich needed to move on and Scott Bourne stepped in. And then Scott Bourne said to me one day, I want to move on and do some other things you need a new co-host. And I said, who? And he said, how about Shamara Young? And Shamara and I had met for probably two minutes at a WPPI (laughs) one year. If that. (laughs) If that, yeah. And this whole time, she was the one behind the scenes that was doing the editing and all all the background noise and making Scott and I sound better than we deserved. And it's just been, Shamara, it has been an amazing relationship. And I know we're going to keep doing a podcast here and there. But as far as Mind Your Own Business goes, everybody, um, I'm I'm moving on. And it has been one incredible run. So, Well, it's, been a, it's been a blast yeah. to work with you, Skip, just so you know. Yeah. I mean, these years have flown by. Uh, it's crazy. Well, I had somebody at WPPI once come up to me after I left WPPI. Um, gentleman came up to me and, and in a very thick Hispanic accent, he said something like, uh, it's so good to see you. And he said, uh, you are a cockroach. And I looked at him and he said, yeah, you know, they, you can't kill a cockroach. <laughs> so he meant it, he meant it strictly as a compliment because I had moved on to other things and I'd left WPPI and there I was doing something else. And, um, I think we're an industry in a really great way of, of just strange bugs that cannot be killed. Oh, I mean, it's hilarious. just, yeah. And that kind of fits <laughs> so in. True. Yeah. And that fits in with all our guests. I mean, think about, think about the guests that we've had. Um, and there's so many of them. I mean, we've done one a month. Uh, you and I have been working together for what? Five years, six years now. At least that. Um, yeah. Five or six. Yeah. Maybe, maybe in a little bit longer. Um, so when you look back, what are, what are some of the guests that we had on that, just hit you with, God, what a cool lesson to learn yeah. or an idea. It, you want me to kick it off? Because yeah, I definitely yeah, have go. some 
By the way, everybody, you can tell we've nothing is scripted on this show except the first question and the last question. (laughs) Yeah, it's been amazing over the years, the fantastic advice that we've gotten from our guests. And I'll kick it off with David Trust. Oh, my goodness. He, you know, what struck me about David was his focus on positivity. We chatted with him, what was it, in 2021, I think it was? Yeah, it was a... Because it was a few months before uh, PPA was going to launch the show in uh, in Baltimore at the uh, National Harbor Convention Center. That's right. And so for those listening, David is the CEO of PPA. And so having him on the show was just amazing. And, you know, 2021, we're still dealing with the pandemic and photographers are still trying to restart their businesses, essentially. And so... One thing that he addressed during his interview was the negativity within the photo industry. And it was interesting because he mentioned that back in 2008, as our country was going through a very interesting time then, if anyone remembers the crash of 2008, he said that the photo industry had essentially been trying to shake off this sense of negativity. And that has kind of even carried through into today. And one thing that he mentioned was that people was that photographers were saying and believing mistakenly that people don't value photography the way they used to, like a very negative thing to think. And he said that's simply not true. And that here in America, people are spending more money on photography than ever. And so rather than being negative with everything going on with the economy and the pandemic, you still have to stay positive because people are still spending money and people need your photography. They need you. And I thought that was so cool. Well, it's interesting because I got to spend a little bit of time with David at uh, Imaging USA following that podcast that January. And they actually pulled off one of the best shows. In fact, it it was the best show of last year. They had 6,500 attendees. David and his crew put together an an excellent show. Was it the biggest ever? Absolutely not. But I'll tell you one thing. It was the most spirited convention that I think I've been at in years and years and years. People were just pumped to be back together. Mm -hmm. And I think this next show, I don't want to sound like an infomercial. I don't work for PPA. But this next show coming up this next January in Nashville is going to be remarkable. Mm. Um, because people still recognize that we've got to work together and it was just a good crowd. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, for me, one of the, for one of the highlights and you and I have talked a lot about her was, uh, we've had Kay Asker John Mm -hmm. several times. Mm -hmm. And in fact, she may be the one person that's been on the most over the years, both going back to Rich and I, and then twice with you and I, and Kay is just remarkable and one of the things that i loved i went back and i listened to what she said when we asked that final question of what advice would you give a photographer just starting out today and she her her response essentially was one don't give up Mm. two keep in mind that you are double if not quadruple challenge today because trying to start a business or maintain a business in this in whatever you call the pandemic or post-pandemic atmosphere is tough but don't be afraid to fail. And she commented, and what she said reminded me that uh, Kay is essentially an overnight 35-year success <laughs> <laughs> because it didn't happen overnight. And so many new photographers look at some of the successful photographers today and people we admire, and you go, wow, they, they got it all. But you don't realize that it may it, it's taken years Um, There's nobody that just jumps out and wins the lottery and becomes an instant um, um, icon on everybody's mind and on everybody's calendar. And that was that was just great. She talked about balance. She talked about um, getting through the pandemic with um, her parents who were elderly and had been had gone into an assisted living complex and she couldn't see them. Mm. Um, You know, she's. She's stepping up to the window and pressing her nose against the window of their room, but she can't hug her mom and dad. And it was just, it, it's, I, I don't know how to put it. I get very emotional talking about Kay because she's so open and so honest and so helpful. Yeah. So. Yeah. And she talked about within all of that mental health, the importance of, of preserving your mental health, which is so true for everybody right now. Everyone. Yep. 
So I, another thing I did, I went back and I listened to a couple. You want to hear a couple of comments? Yeah, that, I sure do. That people said in closing, which I just thought was outstanding. Um, we always ask the same question. What advice would you give a photographer just starting out? And Joe McNally said things like read a lot, be aware of the world, pay attention to the to the history of the craft. So you understand sort of you can't understand where you're going if you don't understand where you've been or where our industry has, has been. Um, he talked about it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, you've got to develop the ability. In fact, th this was in reference to learning how to write and write a proposal or a contract. You've got to develop the ability to move people and get them interested in your work. Clay Blackmore made a comment, make each customer feel like they're your only customer. Mm. Um, in fact, I don't know about you, but Clay made me feel like we were the only podcast he's ever been on. <laughs> I mean, it was, was it awesome. was just great. He, he was so focused. Uh, Scott Bourne commented about photograph with your heart. Mm. which is which is so important you've got to be able to connect the dots and love what you're doing and understand why you're doing it and the other scott that i know so well scott kelby talked about the importance of relationship building and mm -hmm. being a part of the community i mean we when you think back i mean some of our guests just so everybody knows we don't plan we don't we, we've never sat down and said all right here's who we want to do each month of the year forward um, sometimes we'd forget that there was even a podcast due and we had a date coming up and you'd call me on a Monday saying, you know, we're supposed to, uh, have a podcast for Thursday. Wow. You're telling so, all our secrets, Skip. Um, well, <laughs> but I want people to know that it, <laughs> it's true. I am. This is, in, this is in reference to how wonderful an industry we're a part of because mm -hmm. a lot of our guests, um, said, yeah, I'm, I'm available. And it might've been. 24 or 48 hours before we recorded um, because we were last minute um, often. Uh, and then sometimes we'd get ahead of the curve and we'd get a couple of these in the pipeline. Well, you even mentioned Ann Geddes. I hope I'm saying her last name. Yep. Right. You right. know, she, you mentioned how she thanked us for being on our podcast and interviewing her when she's been on Oprah how many times? Like, she's been on Oprah three times. And she's thanking and, us. Oh. Yeah. Well, I, I just remember feeling so honored with yeah. that because here she is. She's She's been live on television with Oprah back when Oprah had her show. And she's thanking, you know, Shamira and Skip, two knuckleheads with a podcast, <laughs> um, for how much, how much fun it was. And mm -hmm. her comments and her willingness to give back. A lot of people don't realize that the Geddes Foundation um, has put millions of dollars um, into uh, support of a number of charities. I know she works a lot with uh, UNICEF and working working with, you know, kids around the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you go to the other extreme, um, seasoned veterans to relatively new photographers, but not so new. And that was um, when we did our interview with Lindsay Adler. I mean, Lindsay started her business at 15, <laughs> um, which, which just amazes me. Uh, she's a phenomenal fashion photographer. She's somebody that should be on everybody's radar. But she talked about the constant struggle between being proud of what you created, but also realizing that you can always do better and that there's more to learn. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. education has come up. Don't, uh, would you agree that it, that continuing to stay focused on your education and developing your skills has been one of the repeated comments from our guests? Oh, absolutely. And even just it, it, it's important the way I see it to have that creative tension where you understand that education should always play a role in your business and your skill set because you're always sharpening yourself to get better. But at the same time, you do need to be proud, kind of like Lindsay was saying. Um, of your work, but still wanting to get better. And education has come up. That's probably one of the most common themes that have come up time and time again on this podcast. Yep. Um, in fact, if I look back, um, I think Matthew Jordan Smith was one of the first ones to talk about um, the importance of special projects mm. to help you stay focused. And mm -hmm. wow, if you look at 
what everybody went through over over the height of the pandemic. I'm not talking about when it first started and nobody knew what to do or at the end where half the world came back out of their house and came out of hiding. I'm talking about that year and a half in the middle that was really intense where yeah. nobody wanted to go to a restaurant. Nobody went. I mean, we were all masked up and, you know, the world was just living in fear. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the number of special projects and things that some of the greatest photographers in the world did just to develop their skills, I mean, it's it, it it's pretty mind blowing because now, they had time on their hands. Who was the photographer? And I guess this is when people were getting out a little more, but it was still during the pandemic. Oh, his name is escaping me. He did that special project on was it the trains or the oh, subways? I can't think of his name from Chicago. Oh, um, that's going to bug me. Oh, all right. Come maybe on. we'll get it before the end of the podcast. <laughs> if not, we'll have it in the in the write-up. And I can see the portraits, the portraits Absolutely. he did of the people who were really out there on the front line, front lines during the pandemic, still, you know, trying to serve people in work. And he took these stunning images. And, oh, okay, I got to remember had a, who this He had a couple of hundred... Uh, pictures of the workers from the Chicago Transit Authority because yeah. he had been on the train. And these were the people that were the unsung heroes behind the scenes. And then the fun part of this is, as a result of the podcast he did with, did with us, word got out, and I can't remember what happened with the project, but somebody in, somebody in Chicago government or in one of the publications oh. got excited about it, and he wound up with exposure a step further and it's you know That's everybody great. yeah as as shamir and i babble through all this stuff um this is absolutely off the cuff but the point of that podcast with him was simply here's somebody that gave back to the community with a camera in his hands mm -hmm. um and he didn't start out thinking that way he was just he was trying to come up with something to do and i've got to get out i got to i've got to take some pictures and just get out and click the shutter a few times. And that's when this project developed and it, and it grew into something in a way to say thank you to a group of people that probably wouldn't have been, they, they wouldn't have been recognized. I mean, the right. mayor of any community would, would say thank you to, you know, everybody that helped keep the city going during a crisis. But this is one where he very specifically um, spoke put the spotlight on a group of people that were keeping Chicago moving, literally. Oh, I got it. Andrew Michaels, right? That's right. it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> yes. And, and there's another example, everybody. Um, Andrew and I met at ClickCon. Um, it's so important that you go to every possible conference you can. It's nice doing stuff online now, but as we start to get back into it, I mentioned Imaging USA in January. Uh, Get get back out there. You nothing beats relationship building when you're meeting people face to face. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to jump in with one. Um, just talking about the power of photography. Myron Fields. He during his interview he really stressed the fact that we are leaving a legacy as photographers. We leave a legacy. We document what's going on, especially during the pandemic. You know we. <sighs> I was listening to his interview and it was funny because you and I had one of those speechless moments where we're just like so struck that we couldn't say anything. He was talking about his great grandparents and his grandparents and the fact that they had essentially lived history that we read about in textbooks. And he discussed the, the role of oral history that he had from them as he grew up and the fact that it actually shaped how he viewed portraiture and photography in the impact that we have as photographers uh, when we take portraits, even family portraits and weddings for our clients. And so just that sense of legacy that shaped his photography was really, really powerful. And as photographers, we need to always remember that what we do is a powerful thing. We, we shouldn't minimize what we do ever. Well, what's interesting is he took it a step further um, you weren't there, but I was. Myron and Michelle Celentano and I did a program. Um, and unfortunately, you couldn't be there, but you were there. You were definitely there in spirit. But Myron talked about the importance of capturing that legacy. And then Michelle talked about the importance of 
multi-generational family portraits. And for everybody, as you go into this 2022 holiday season, um, don't forget grandma. Uh, and I'm using that as an all-encompassing expression because it's grandpa. It's it's any of the truly elder members of a family. Uh, so if you've been if you've been hired to do a family portrait. Uh, besides just mom, dad, and the kids at that particular location, don't forget to ask about grandparents and are they around and are they available and can we bring them into the photograph? And that led me to talk about just developing a whole legacy program for your business where you're involved in capturing images that tell the story of a family and especially a thing that uh, is a spinoff of the friendship centers here in Sarasota have done called uh, My Journey, where on video you document uh, the stories from grandparents and great grandparents. I, sadly, it, it kills me that when my dad passed away six years ago, I had never sat him down. And we all have the ability to do it. If we, if, even if you don't have a camera, you can do it with your phone mm-hmm. and just sit down and say, hey, dad. You know, how'd you and mom meet? Um, what was it like coming back from World War II? Uh, mm. What, you know, what what things do you remember when you were a kid and growing up? And what were some of the challenges? And you look at all of those things. And as photographers, you guys have the ability to do things that nobody has ever done. You're magicians. You can capture a family story. And that becomes part of your own legacy program that you're offering this holiday season. Uh, don't don't be afraid to throw that in there. In fact, I remember talking to you about uh, Get Your Grandfather yes. on, on, on film. And I will be for, those stories. forever grateful that you urged me to do that because I remember you were urging me to do it for a long time. And it it gives me goosebumps because we I finally sat down with him and it was great because we, we were having a family get together here and impulsively I pulled out my camera and people were looking like, Oh, what's she doing? And it was probably the, the only time that I had sat down and got some video footage of him. And it wasn't soon after that, that he passed away, actually, like very soon after that. And as the time was coming, when we realized we were going to lose him, family members were coming to me saying, I need that video footage. Give me that, you know, we need make copies for everybody. Like that's how important it was. So yep. What we do is powerful. For all of you listening right now, a light bulb should have gone off above your head like a cartoon character getting an idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put put some kind of legacy program into your offerings this holiday season. Um, You're going to be doing family portraits. Um, Play it up. Document. Help help your audience document those moments from family members. I mean, I I love Throwback Thursday, and I, I do it because... It's so much fun, but it also reminds everybody that they've got to look back through their own history. And more importantly, you've got to remind mom that things are never, the kids are never going to be the same as they are today. Tomorrow, they're going to be a day older. Something's going to change. And especially through the pandemic, we all learned that, God, anything can happen. And certainly not always what you expect or what you want. That's right. So do you have any idea? I I haven't done a full count. Do you have any idea how many guests we might have had? Oh, (laughs) I have not done a count either. Now, if you had asked me before the show, I would have put that number together. It's a lot. Well, we've done, let's see, five years, and we've had at least one guest a month. And we've gone at least five years, so that's at least... 12 times 5 is 60. We've had 60. Well, we I had some I did, repeats, but yeah, I did a count once and I came up with you and I having done somewhere around 130 podcasts, but that includes oh, uh, beyond technique that right. we did for a few years. Yeah. And I was also counting in Tamron recipes. Uh, the point is we that guys, there's, there's that old line about if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Um, I think Shamir and I are examples of um, a lot of things that we, we simply love what we do. Yeah. And this podcast has just been a kick to do. We have been honored with some of the finest artists in the world. Um, and not always people that any of you knew. Every now and then we had somebody relatively new on, on the program that 
nobody uh, nobody had heard of before, or maybe a, a select number of people. But the point is that this is an industry that truly is, and this sounds very sappy, but we are a family. And yeah, we got a couple of hockey puck relatives here and there, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm being polite. Um, but we all watch each other's backs, and it's just been a remarkable journey. My my count is, I'm guessing that we're more like a like 130 total with 60 to 70 that were just mind your own business. That feels about right. Wow. Yeah. That's and, unbelievable. And here we are going into the holiday season of 2022. That's pretty amazing. That's unreal. That's unreal. Wow. So was there anyone else that you wanted to highlight? Before? Yeah. Well, I had I had one other one that I just love, sure. that, which became kind of like Myron Fields talking about creating that legacy and remembering why you're out there. Bob and Don Davis ah. um, recommended something. Um, for those of you that may not know Bob, Bob is primarily best known as a wedding photographer in Chicago. He's also doing some incredible things working together with Scott Bourne now on um, outdoor wildlife, which is very cool because he loves it. But Bob and Don talked about when they photograph a wedding, that they make a, a point to take pictures of the centerpieces, of the buffet, of of things that are only of interest to other vendors that are supporting the bride and groom. But what they do when they get back is send those images, for example, a caterer. They would take pictures of the place settings. They would take pictures of the buffet, um, of some of the key elements of in in, in terms of food and drink and, and other beverages, whatever. And then they would send those images to the caterer with a note that said, hey, you know, enjoyed working with your team. Use these with our blessing. So they're giving those other vendors the ability to enjoy their ability as artists and photographers to have documented the event. And it's all about it's it's a key to relationship building, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is, you know, it's such a good idea, no matter what event you're at. Whether you're shooting a, a wedding, a bar mitzvah, or or a walkathon right. in your community, is Absolutely. providing those images to people that will appreciate them because it builds that relationship out even more. In fact, I remember Clay talking, telling me once, um, he had a caterer at a wedding um, ask him if he could just shoot, you know, ten seconds of video so that the caterer oh. could see how everything was set up. Yeah, and. Clay never does anything halfway. Clay went ahead and, and actually put together a two to three minute video uh, with music, the whole nine yards, and sent it off to the caterer. That nice. caterer became Clay's, or has become, one of Clay's number one um, referring companies wow. for additional brides and grooms to, to build Clay's business. And it's all because Clay always gives back. That goes a long way. Wow. Sure does. That goes a long way. I love it. Well, How cool. It's it's just a remarkable industry, everybody. And if you're stuck and you can't figure out what to do, don't be afraid to ask for help. There's, there's so many of us out here. Yeah. We're all in this together. Absolutely. And wow. we're pretty much we're pretty much out of time. Well, hey, did you still want me to ask our favorite final question? <laughs> Yeah, go Put ahead. Put you in the ask, hot seat this the time. Question. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So, Skip, what advice do you have for photographers just starting out right now? It's funny. I, I knew we might do this, and I really didn't think through my answer. <laughs> uh, but that's also the way I operate. First of all, your heart's got to be in it. You mm. can't take photographs that tug at people's heartstrings if your own heart isn't in it. So in those moments when it's not in it, take the time to step out of the arena because sometimes it really is. It's like gladiators in back in old old Rome battling it out in the arena. Um, take step away from it. Um, get to know your skill set. Get to know the business side. If there's been one common denominator from so many artists, uh, it it's get to know the business. It's not just about snapping the shutter. The fact, the reality is, what good is creating the greatest images of your life if nobody knows who you are? 
Um, so get to know the business side, get to know the camera side and everything in terms of your technical skills, never stop learning. And most important of all is what I said a second ago, don't be afraid to ask for help. There isn't anybody in this industry who hasn't felt like a failure, whether it's for five minutes or <laughs> I know a couple of people that, that went years just feeling like, God, am I ever going to make it? And I remember Michelle Celentano getting up in front of a group of about 80 people and looking at all of them and saying, 20 years ago, I was right where all of you are wondering how long it would be before my images didn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody suddenly relaxed and realized we're all in this together. So I don't know if I answered your question there. I babbled for a while. That was, that was the perfect answer. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean, it's a journey. Things don't happen overnight. You have to stick with it and trust yourself, have confidence yourself in yourself and, and to really put your heart in it. So that was the perfect answer. Wow. There you it, go. As usual, this episode just flew by. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, Skip, I, I do want to thank you for, for everything. You have been an absolute blast to work with and you have made this podcast awesome. And you were awesome. So just a huge well, thank you from all of us. Well, it goes right back to you and to all of our listeners. Um, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm not I'm not about to retire, even though an awful lot of my friends at my age have retired. I love this industry too much and I'm mm -hmm. having too much fun. I'm just stepping away from doing this podcast for a while and just taking a break. Mm -hmm. um, but as I've said to so many guests before we've gone on, um, Shamara, you've, you've made me sound literally better than I deserve uh, <laughs> so much of the time. But the fun of the fun of working with you is that and there are a lot of us like this, we're all cut from the same cloth. You love this industry. Mm -hmm. And it comes out even in some of the things that you're doing as you branch out and this could be another podcast down the road um, into the fine art world <laughs> and and doing things that are different and taking those skills and I've loved working with you. It's fun working with people that you learn from. So, oh, wow. And on well, that, thank you. On that note, if anybody does want to find me, <laughs> we've asked the same question every single time. <laughs> right. Um, I'm always going to be, everything I write is at skipcohenuniversity.com. I'm Skip Cohen on Twitter. I'm Skip Cohen on Facebook. And if you want to send me an email, you've ever got any questions, I'm not stepping away from the industry for a second. Uh, my email is skip at mei500.com. And Shamira, where do they go to keep finding you? Folks can send me an email at shamira at photofocus.com. That's my first name, C-H-A-M-I-R-A at photofocus.com. We love getting questions, ideas, and feedback. Like Skip said, he's not going anywhere. He's still going to be around. And, and so we do love your feedback. And with that said, Skip, wow. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's a kick, and it's going to continue to be a kick. The only difference right now is we don't know what we're going to do next. Right. Well, that's the exciting part, yeah. right? <laughs> yep. Oh, and we want to thank our listeners for joining us today. We urge you all to listen to the archives. Head over to photofocus.com and type in Mind Your Own Business in the search box, and you will be amazed at the number of episodes that come up. We've had some amazing guests. All of our guests have been amazing um, you'll get great ideas and inspiration for your photography business. And with that, we will wrap up this episode of Mind Your Own Business, brought to you by Photo Focus and Skip Cohen University. 